the Main Brew Bus Virtual Brewery Tours, a brand new offering. Um, it goes without saying, there's a new normal in life right now. It's a serious curtailment on our, what was regular for us, our work, our school, and our life routines. Um, all those changes have made an impact on us. And worldwide, this is affecting the travel trade. Global tourism, which was on an upswing, uh, is now uh, going to take a hit um, worldwide. And that's a, that's a big that's a big issue, and here in Maine, the mandates that are being issued uh, they're a matter of life safety, and uh, they help to contain the view or help to contain the uh, the spread of the virus. For sure. restaurants, cafes, and bars are empty, and the ones that can pivot are pivoting towards delivery, curbside service, and takeout. Uh, breweries, wineries, and distilleries like our friend David in uh, York, Maine. Hello, David. Hey, what's going on, Don? Not much. Uh, stand by one second. I was just talking about breweries, wineries, and distilleries. That uh, They're all following the same lead that uh, the state's putting forward. They are um, also trying to pivot as best as they can. Uh, there are zero guests filling their tasting rooms on what would normally be a very busy Saturday. Uh, but they're able to get their beer out through distribution, although those might be limited channels as well. And then getting very creative with uh, pickup, delivery, and takeout services as well. Um, but then there are tour companies, tour companies like the main brew bus. Uh, we don't have an option for curbside uh, pickup. We don't have an option for takeout. We don't have an option for delivery at this time. So uh, basically, without us being able to bring people to our partners, uh, we have no tour company. And it may be months before people are legally able to take a small group tour with us. Uh, it's going to require a safe and healthy environment and the ability for people to be able to travel freely like they once were. Groups will need to be allowed to congregate um, together without a fear of disease transmission before we can ever hope to have buses rolling to uh, local breweries, wineries, and distilleries again. Uh, then the final part is that people like you, the people that are watching this uh, virtual brewery tour, may uh, very likely have limited discretionary income to spend on an extra tour. Uh, we do hope that you're spending it with uh, hospitality, with restaurants, with uh, breweries, wineries, and distilleries, but we're... Uh, we're very understanding that uh, that perhaps a uh, organized brewery tour may not be at the top of your list once we're able to roll again. So uh, we want to change that. We are offering this uh, free service called uh, Virtual Brewery Tours. Uh, we're doing this three times a day indefinitely at 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, and 5 o'clock. And this is a half an hour to, uh, to talk to the brewery owners like David and find out what's going on for real so that we're not, uh, we're not wondering what is happening we know exactly what's happening because i know they're making beer and i know they're selling beer and i know that they are trying to, to put smiles on people's faces at this time so these are going to be fun they're going to be upbeat we're going to be discussing the challenges that each brewery is facing but um uh, definitely is, is designed to provide a little bit of uh, uh, knowledge information and education for you the viewers and also a way for uh, our brewery partners to connect with the people that are wondering what's going on so that being said What's going on, David? Oh, not much, man. You're looking at it. <laughs> <laughs> where are you right now? You've got two locations in York, so where are we finding you right now? Yeah, so right now I'm, I'm actually sitting in uh, our original location, Sum Brewing, which is the Route 1 location if you've uh, been here before. And uh, I'm in the brewery. As I'm, well, part of the brewery. I'm sitting down. but uh, Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> but yeah That's so the part of the brewery. That's the part of the brewery that used to be a dance studio, as I recall. Uh, yes, yes, and there still is plenty, <laughs> plenty of dancing, so. <laughs> I'm sure there is. Uh, before we get going and talking too much, let's uh, find out what we're enjoying in our glass. So I'd like to find out from you. What are you enjoying in your glass right now? Well, uh, right now I have our um, dry Irish-style stout that is on nitro. I, I, it's hard to see. You can. There's some little, still some good little bubbles in there, but poured it a little bit ago. It's on nitro. Unfortunately, it's the beer I can't share with anybody right now. <laughs> so uh, we brew it obviously for uh, St. Patty's Day, and um, yeah, that's what I'm drinking because it's we need to drink it, I guess. So, <laughs> so be because it's uh, it's prepped for nitro, it's all kegged right now, and you're not able to move kegs, is what I'm no, imagining you're saying. No, yeah, yeah, and and unfortunately too, um, I mean we we this beer is called Angry Inch, and um, you know four percent, it's great. Um, we only serve it on draft in our tasting room because um, nitro is a, a far more uh, sure. um, far more difficult uh, gas to work with than say CO two, and um, without specialized equipment, we can't package it um, in a way that the consumer would expect to open a can and get 
the cascading effect and the silky smoothness of nitro and and so we only have it on draft right now and and unfortunately in these times um people are like oh i'm coming in for angry inch and i'm like i can't even give you a growler of it because it's going to be flat can't do it (laughs) you can't do it so what does that mean you just have to drink it all right uh yeah we're doing our best here uh all (laughs) all of us all the staff i think it's mandatory uh mandatory uh, beers after uh, other shifts and uh, (laughs) help us get through it. it so I love it. Well, I don't know. All I right, mean, so it's a stout, so hopefully it'll hold up, and this will be over soon, and we can enjoy it still. So I also am enjoying a stout. This is also from some brewing. Um, let's see if you can Where's, deduce what this might be right I'm here. Clink you first. Yeah, um, cheers. Is that peanut butter will be by? Uh, no. Smell again. Hmm. Uh, is that? Ooh, is that big whoop? It is Big Whoop, yes. Ah. 2018 Big Whoop, 9.5%. Nice. Yeah, which I picked up during one of your uh, one of your anniversary parties. Ah, so, yeah, uh, nice. This was... seemed like a, a good time to open it up. <laughs> yeah, no, that, why not, right? <laughs> right? Cheers, David. Cheers. It's really nice. It's really nice. Mm. Glad it held up. <laughs> Yeah, it did. It did very much so. Um, so let's get going. Uh, bef- for those who haven't heard your story before, it's a really interesting one. And let's talk about what the path was that led you to open up some brewing company in York. Um, yeah, well, I was a high school history teacher. Um, I am originally from uh, Philadelphia area, Pennsylvania, and um, went to school you know, right out of high school to go into college, uh, secondary education history, and, you know, got out, was a teacher. Um, My wife and I moved to northern New Jersey because she got a job up there. She's a guidance counselor. Uh, A certain large governor took office and cut a lot of money and I, and, 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 you know, the budget and I I lost my job. Uh, Mm. And basically, you know, because my father had, um, had, I'm doing air quotes, retired from <laughs> uh, managing a uh, large uh, design build construction firm or a landscape firm, moved to Lake Placid, New York and, and started a, a, a contracting company because he can't not work. And um, so I was able to go work for him to pay my mortgage and, uh, you know, basically keep things as float as I could uh, while reverse commuting home four and a half hours to see my wife on the weekends and vice versa. <laughs> um uh, but I had been absolutely infatuated with beer since before I was even legal because my dad brewed beer in the 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 but that's another conversation. Um, but yeah, so I, I, you know, I basically worked for my dad doing construction and um, still brewing like crazy. And then the whole, you know, nano brew scene kind of started really happening. And uh, and as more breweries started opening and being, you know, our vacations revolved around beer and, and everything revolved around beer. I was brewing obsessively. Um, we started to like see a lot of other people do it and realize that we could do it and uh, Mm. the right set of circumstances, you know, presented themselves. And, you know, my wife being a high school guidance counselor sat me down and was like, Hey, this is those situations you hear about. You need to make a decision. You need to see what you want to do. Um, um, Turn this bad thing into a good thing. And uh, my father who has, you know, from the beginning was supportive. uh, You know, he, is the numbers guy. He's the business guy. He's run businesses. And, um, you know, we convinced my mom, 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 my mom to do this before anyone. And, um, we finally started working on the business plan and, uh, we got, got together some money and I wanted to, um, open in York because there wasn't a brewery here, but we always visited Maine. We always vacationed here. Um, there was clear, clearly a burgeoning scene, um, and, um, <clears throat> you know, we saw an opening and, uh, we opened our doors in December of 2013 a- after a mm. government, sh- after a government shutdown too. Yeah. I was going to say, you're no, sh- you're no stranger to these uh, government imposed shutdowns, are you? Nope. I honestly think nope. I am probably <laughs> one of the only people to ever say that 
every time I open a brewery, there's a government shutdown. <laughs> uh, in this case, you're not <laughs> opening a brewery. I just want to say uh, Keith Wright says hi to you. I don't know if you caught that. Yeah, and if anybody true. has any questions or comments right at the bottom <laughs> of your Instagram screen where it says comment, go ahead and do that. I have somebody who's watching out for your questions, and uh, we'll be able to pose those as our half an hour goes on. So uh, you mentioned, David, that at one time, um, or you picked York because there were no other breweries in York, but now there's two. So talk about that other brewery that's just down the road. Yeah, uh, that other brewery is uh, also our brewery. So uh, <laughs> we um, here at some, uh, you know, we we're, we're pretty maxed out. I mean, you've been here, uh, you yeah. know, it's it's classic move six things to move one thing to, kind of scenario. Uh, you know, we don't have a ton of we're, we're working to try to get some more space. But, uh, you know, I won't go into all the details, but basically we, we, we needed more space. We needed to brew more beer. Um, and we, we started down the road of um, an offsite production facility that the um, public wouldn't visit, uh, would allow us, you know, to, to brew a lot more beer. But uh, as we started to look at the numbers, we realized that uh, we didn't want to chase the distribution game. Um, you know, there was a lot of breweries doing this, getting really big and spending a lot of money and then having an insane amount of debt to pay back where you're only making it through distribution. So, you right. know, really, it really took out the staying small and local piece by doing that. And we started to look into then maybe a second location um, where we were allowed to have a, a second tasting room. And um, instead of doing it, uh, you know, in another town, um, you know, if you've ever been to York, you know, there's that they call it the Yorks, I think, actually, even mm -hmm. on the 95, the sign says the Yorks, because there's right. a lot of different uh, areas of York proper. And, you know, our psalm is up on Route 1, right by Hannaford's, right by the exit. Um, but there's the whole York Beach area, which is only about three miles from the original brewery, but um, is you know, in the summer, a whole world away. A lot of people come visit and, you know, they'll go to Hannaford's or they'll swing up here on a rainy day to check us out. And, or people that know us will swing through, but we just don't, you know, we, we looked at York beaches. Hey, this is where everyone's staying for a, you know, a sizable portion of the summer and, and all, obviously the shoulder seasons as well. And we, you know, found a building and the right uh, partner down there, landlord to work with. And, um, we, you know, it basically allowed us to brew more beer um, ourselves while also being able to sell it ourselves and, um, mm. you know, keep our, uh, our debt far more manageable and, um, you know, frankly, be able to bring the Sum brand to more people uh, down at York Beach who might not know us because they don't leave York Beach. You know, they'll see us in <laughs> the restaurants down there. But uh, but it also allowed us to introduce a new brand um, that would focus on, you know, more on lagers and more um, more sessionable, you know, lighter beach oriented beers. So we opened York Beach Beer Company um, in uh, we actually just celebrated our one year anniversary on March 9th. So right. um so we opened um, in on March 9th, uh, uh, and we got held up because of a government shutdown again for the <laughs> second time. But uh, but yeah, so uh, that York Beach Beer Company has allowed us like we've brewed um, probably 90 percent of the beer we've brewed down there since November has been all some uh, brand beer, and and it's under yep. this, uh, the one LLC. So we're allowed to thanks to state and federal regulations transport beer freely back and forth between lo both yep. locations. Uh, but allow us to, you know, fill the demand that we couldn't at our current facility. And uh, as, like I said, as, as, as a way to, um, you know, sell it ourselves and, and introduce a new brand that has a different focus. So, like I said, we're mostly lagers and, and easier drinking beers down there. I don't think we have a beer that's above 6% down there. So amazing yeah and so the expectation would be if, if nothing had changed that you'd be kind of uh brewing more york beach beer company beers as these next couple of months go on for yep. the influx of people that are coming in uh, yeah. one question i do have at this point is are you already seeing more visitors coming into york um and what i mean by that is i read two articles yesterday that said that uh typical summer visitors perhaps with summer homes are coming even earlier now to wait this out uh, they'd rather be hanging out in maine where there's clear air and not a lot of people around. Are you, are you guys seeing that at all at York Beach? A hundred percent. It's yeah. um, it's it's 
it's bittersweet. Is that the right? It's it's. I think it's that's fair. Kind of cool because people are like ordering beer and it's great, but it's also like I'm driving, driving. You know, I live down at the beach between um, Short Sands and Long Sands. So when I was coming here, um, I drive right by Long Sands, and I just go driving down the road like in my head, yelling at people. That's not six feet, and it's just like it looked. There's cars <laughs> everywhere, and like people are like out and about, and they're like, hey, that's great. Oh man, but and and I like that you're you know still ordering from us and we appreciate it and it's so unbelievably huge the support but also like like you stay away from each other at least um, it, but it's crazy because yeah. it's like you know you read the reports too like you know the the amount of Massachusetts plates that we see around here is, for this time of year is 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 like this like not really like the summer but it's pretty yeah. crazy to see that much and it's also like hey thanks for coming but also could you not. Like, I love yeah. you guys. Thank you for your support. But also, like, we really need to be conscious and be safe. And, you know, I mean, people have been good for what it's worth. People have been good about um, calling in and we'll, we'll bring it out to them. They'll pop the trunk, check the ID, yada, yada. Um, but, uh, you know, we got a lot of phone calls. Are, are you open? Can we come in and try some beers? And it's like, yeah. no, no, sorry. We just, we're not. We wish we were. We really wish we were. But it's... um. It's it's a bit nuts. It's to see this many people up here this time of year. Yeah, and I, and I have to, uh, go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say we're talking with Dave Rowland from Sun Brewing and York Beach Beer Company in York, Maine, and this is our very first uh, virtual brewery tour uh, from the main brew bus. Uh, what I was going to say is you are actually you are open for business in both locations. You've been yep. doing a really good job communicating that. I, I watched the video where you basically explained that. Uh, you know, you can do lots of different things. It's, uh, some you can order online through a Square site. Uh, you can pay ahead. You can call. You can pay over the phone. You'll probably take, um, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll do whatever it is. If they're healthy, you can do the takeout, but you'll also come curbside and all kinds of stuff. And then at York Beach Beer, uh, you've offered uh, not only the ability to sell kegs to those that might have a home set up, mm-hmm. For uh, for beer, but also a free lime program. Lime, like the fruit. Yeah. What's that? What's that all about? Well, like uh, like I said, you know, down at, at the uh, the Beach Brewery, as we call it, uh, York Beach Beer Company. Um, you know, one of our best selling beers is a Mexican style lager, and um, uh, we have it on all year long. Um, a, you know, craft Corona, if you want to call it that. Um, but we we don't we, talk we, about that anymore. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I had to say, it. come on. <laughs> I know, I know. Uh, but no, we ordered a big box of lime because uh, you know weekends are still good and and we that beer still does really well. And you know, if people want a lime with it, we got you covered. And now that we can't sell any of this beer by the pint or, or the large taster. Um, we were like, well, we have this whole box of limes and what are we going to do with them? <laughs> so we said, Hey, if you come buy a four pack, you get a free lime because we don't want them to go to waste. And you know, Hey, why not? If you want a lime with yeah. it, we got you covered. It's free. Don't worry about it. <laughs> so if you find that limes are in short supply, head to 33 railroad Avenue in York <laughs> beach for a free lime with purchase, yes. which is great. Uh, Dave, it seems like you might have a unique perspective on this with uh, with Sarah's profession, but uh, when were you first made aware that there was going to be uh, problems, that there were going to be closures, and how have your customers reacted? Um, well, you know, we, you know, the, the, my wife being a guidance counselor, yeah, she, um, you know, they, they started to see the writing on the walls uh, pretty early, you know, her, she's close with her nurse and you know just everything that you kind of it obviously hasn't really been uh it's been inescapable if you're you know actually paying attention to um the right news outlets and um her school started planning for it and you know at first it was like yeah i guess that makes sense you know you never know and then day by day it was like okay i think we're starting to see the picture here and um you know it it really, it didn't sneak up on, on us because I think because of that. And because, you know, generally we just, we, we try to be pay attention and, and just the talk amongst the, the, you know, the main brewers guild, which has been killer with helping and just information and, and you know, people like, uh, like Heather Sanborn, uh, from rising yeah. tide, who's been, uh, who's obviously she's from rising tide, but she's also a Senator um, being, you know, sharing information with the guild through our Facebook group. And, uh, everything and it's just been sort of like this isn't a surprise unfortunately and if you watch the news at all um 
um, especially not just our national news, but if you pay attention, um, you know, you can, you can see the pattern. We could see it coming. I, as much as anyone didn't want to admit it, I mean, I've sort of been bracing for this for a while and it's here. Yeah. And I, you know, it's day by, it's hour by hour at this point. And, uh, you know, the, the customers have been a little like, you know, cause we get customers from, from all walks and, uh, you know, some of them are like, ah, they trying to downplay it. And some of them are like, I'm not coming. So you, and yeah. you know, you name it, everyone in between. And it's just, you know, you, you, <laughs> you treat every interaction, you know, separately and, and, uh, you know, try to do our best to be, uh, you know, supportive and let everyone know that we're, you know, I, I can't, my hands are so dry and cracked from wiping down, you know, <laughs> light switches and, and the handles yeah. and, and myself. And so, um, but yeah, it's, 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 you know, this isn't a surprise. It shouldn't be a surprise. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Were you able to adjust production schedules based on, uh, on this? In other words, were you able to see far enough to realize that you were going to lose all on-premise sales? Yeah, I mean, we started talking about it um, a couple weeks ago. Um, we def definitely moved some beers around that we probably, that we, I'm glad we didn't brew, you know. Um, beers that are, you know, double dry hop, this, that, and the other thing. And, um, you know, beers that were, we moved, didn't do them, brewed something. Yeah. Maybe, you know, either imperial strength and or uh lagers like and you're you're you heard it here first you're gonna see a whole lot of lagers when this when this thing um, goes away on the market because everyone's brewing lager and that's fine by me because everyone should drink lager um mm -hmm. but that being said we were able to plan a little bit i have i think i have two batches that are um you know uh, very hoppy ipas that uh are in different stages um, I'm hoping that one of them uh, is a double dry hops variation of our flagship IPA apostrophe. And, um, you know, we, 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 the beer was fermenting and to get that first dry hop in, you have to get it in a, at a certain, certain gravity. And we got that first dry hop in and, you know, it's, it's terminal now. So we were, my brewery ops manager and I were just discussing how to deal with it. And I said, well, the, I mean, at this point, it's done fermenting. We're not going to use this yeast again. Let's dump yeast and let's hold off on that second dry hop and, mm. you know, keep it. We basically have it under pressure at about 60 degrees. And we're going to hope that in a couple weeks, uh, she's still holding in there and we can, you know, once we see the light at the end of the tunnel, we can do that next dry hop and, and, and you know, still put out, out the double dry hop apostrophe that we were we were hoping and uh it yeah. won't it won't it'll still be what it should and if it's not if it's not where it is we're not just going to put it out to put it out uh i mean it's at this point it's it is what it is and and uh yeah. i know that sometimes is a terrible terrible term or phrase rather but uh really at this point like it's gonna either we're it's either gonna be great and in a couple weeks or it'll be fine and we'll release it or in a couple months you'll never see it and don't worry we'll brew another batch and you yeah, know, but um, yeah, we were lucky. I mean, our, our whoopie pie stout and all those variations are hold up really well. So, um, and, and luckily, we had brewed a lot of lager, like you had said, in preparation at the beach to get ready for yeah. the spring. And so, I mean, those beers, mirrors, 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 Kelly Schneck is asking, why is everyone brewing lagers? Um, okay, good question. So uh, lagers, um, uh, there's basically two two families of beer. There's ale and there's lagers. Um, ales are top fermenting yeast, um, warmer temperatures. Uh, so it ferments at warmer temperatures and it's much quicker. Uh, lagers are bottom fermenting yeast that ferments at much lower temperatures. And then the actual term lager uh, in German means to store or to like warehouse. Uh, so basically, um, you know, classically, these were the beers that were um, brewed at in cooler temperatures um, and then uh, aged uh, or lagered for uh, many months. And that's where you get that in incredible uh, crispness and clarity that you get mm -hmm. in, a, in a lager versus uh, an ale. And um, so, uh, you know, on a production from the production side, uh, I mean, a, a, a good 
well done lagers is probably around an eight week beer. Um, meaning that it'll probably take close to two weeks for it to finish fermenting. And then, um, once we do a, a diacetyl rest and, uh, you know, deem it terminal, we'll actually turn the temperature down. Uh, we usually ferment anywhere between, depending on the style of lager and what yeast we're using anywhere from 48 to 52 degrees, we'll actually ferment the beer at, as opposed to mm. around 68, um, ish degrees for an ale. And uh, once it's done uh, fermenting, we'll actually, we'll put some pressure on the tank and um, we'll, uh, if we haven't uh, fermented it slightly under pressure and uh, yep. we'll um, drop it down uh, very cold uh, in, into the, uh, you know, the thirties and, and, and hold it there for, for many weeks. And uh, this is, uh, we don't filter anything. Uh, so this also helps uh, the beer clear up and, um, uh, be crisp, really crystal clear and um, just super crisp and absolutely just delicious. So these are beers so that it, in two weeks, or sorry, two <laughs> two months, months might, yeah. might just be ready to pack it. So <clears throat> if this thing is over, we'll have what is considered actually fresh lager in two months. <laughs> and, yeah. and that is, you know, an appropriate amount of time. Some people you know age them much longer as well and and, and it, it, lager just gets better with age uh for the so most is, part. is it is it merely a function that uh you have less demand that you have more more tank space to allow more lagering at this point well at this point it's you know the because there's so much unknown um you know we have the few tanks that we do have open instead of putting a two week beer in them and then going, Oh crap, we shouldn't have brewed that. Um, hopefully this thing's done and, and this beer won't be starting to lose its luster in a few weeks. Uh, we can, we can just say, Hey, this beer won't be ready until May anyway. So let's hope it's done by then. And if not, yeah. we'll package it and keep it cold and it'll be awesome two months from then, you know? Yeah. That's a good, so, that's a good strategy. Yeah. Hey, do you mind showing us around the brew house a little bit? Maybe talking about some of the things you have in the tanks going on? Sure. Yeah. Let me, um, I've got some barrels right behind me. Um, nice. I think I flip it. Ooh, I did it. Look at me. Oh, I'm, perfect. I'm, yeah. I'm fancy. So. <laughs> you are fancy. I'm a fancy boy. Um, so that's where I was sitting. There's my boots. Um, oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. So this is um, this is the the one end here. This is the garage door with our cute little forklift and uh, some some beer, but not not all beer. And uh, we've got um, we've got four uh, barrels here that were um, we're trying to uh, trying something new out. Uh, we got some uh, brandy barrels here. Uh, which were actually old Jim Beam barrels, but uh, in an effort to get creative and, um, you know, move some beers around, uh, we put, uh, oh, those are 53 gallon barrels. So we put a uh, little over uh, 200 gallons worth of uh, whoopie pie stout in some brandy barrels. And we will be adding uh, some coffee at some point. <laughs> wow. So we will have a uh, sort of coffee brandy barrel aged whoopie pie stout at some point in a few months. So look out for that. But, um, yeah, so this is, uh, we're packed in here. We got some shelves with grain. We've got our two newest batches of apostrophe IPA and whoopie pie stout that we just packaged this week. Um, waiting to hopefully, um, go out to some distribution next week. I know a lot of our distributors are sort of fighting, not fighting. That's the wrong word, but figuring yeah. out, um, where, the need and, and is not knowing what <laughs> things are, how it's going to happen. So we have uh, a bit of beer in limbo, but, uh, you know, for the most part, um, this beer will be good for, for a long time. So we're not, we're not worried about, uh, that, um, there's, uh, some kegs and, uh, mm -hmm. there's my, there's my canning line, which is tucked away over here. Um, so it's, uh, we're our own mobile canner. So, uh, we've modified this line to be able to move it down to our second location to can. Um, but uh, yeah, this is just looking down more kegs. There's my sister, Sarah, who's our general manager. Hello. And, um, hi, Sarah. <laughs> um, this is a beer we just uh, packaged yesterday. It's um, a bourbon barrel aged imperial maple amber called Sugar Wood that, that we brew every year. Agamenicus Amber is one of our flagship uh, um, multi beers. And uh, we did a bourbon barrel aged version. So. Sorry, right now it's only available in the tasting room, but uh, it might make yeah. it north. We'll see. But uh, this is just looking down the cellar. Um, 
and uh, we're on a uh, seven barrel system, but we've got four 15 barrel fermenters and uh, three sevens and two bright tanks of each size. So, um, but uh, yeah, so this is, That's this cool. is some, it's, uh, <clears throat> we're out of space. It's crazy, but you know that. <laughs> <laughs> One thing so. we didn't cover is uh, where does some come from? If people are watching and they're not from Maine, there's a, there's a real reason why that's called sum. Um, yeah, so you want me to flip back over here so you can see my Yeah, presentation? flip on back. Yeah. No, oh, hey, I'm in a different spot. Hey. Um, <clears throat> hey. So uh, some actually, uh, as a lot of things are in this brewery, was my wife. Um, we thought uh, Southern Maine was boring. <laughs> Southern Maine Brewery, Southern Maine Brewing Company. And people still call us that. But if you Google it, it doesn't exist. Um but she, she came up with the idea of, uh, well, why don't we just call it some, like is a nod to Southern Maine. I mean, obviously there's Maine Beer Co. Uh, who, you know, are awesome and kind of obviously clearly own that name. But uh, we didn't want it to be anywhere near that. So there was no confusion or, or whatever. But um, so we called it some. And then my buddy who uh, does all our branding, um, he came up, as you can see with my hat, he put the little underlines there and which has <laughs> caused a, uh, everyone to call it everything from so me to so may to uh whatever and people argue with me about the name and it's like yeah well what i know <laughs> but uh <laughs> so but we still like it you know I, I i for me it's a uh i like the abbott and costello who's on first um for all you that are in your 20s uh, they were a, a comedy duo way long ago and they <laughs> Google who's on first, Abbott Costello. <laughs> they were very famous. They, they were influencers. Yeah, it's very, <laughs> even to me, I mean, I turned 40 in, in, on April 5th, and I even know about them. But, um, <laughs> um, but yeah, it's all, it's all wordplay. It's fun. I, I, I Essentially, I just wanted someone to be, a, you know, like, oh, where were you last night? I was at some brewing company. Oh, really? really? Which one? No, I was at some brewing company. Well, why won't you tell me where you were? And I imagine someone getting in trouble with their wives or girlfriends <laughs> or something or husband or whatever. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so that's where that came from. And uh, as long as they're talking about your brewery, right? That's all that matters. I mean, hey, as long as you're talking about it. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so the message here is uh, you're brewing beer. You're uh, making plans to get beer out to people. And, um, you know, you're, you're very much working. Um, it probably yeah. is a slim down crew now. But um, yeah, it, it's um, I mean, we're, we're trying to keep as many people on as we can. Um, and uh, we're still packaging, we're still brewing. Uh, we're definitely trying to be smart about it and, um, you know, not go crazy thinking this is gonna be over tomorrow or even in two weeks, cause it's not. Um, and I will be happy if it is and I'm wrong. But um, yeah, it's just uh, it's sort of readjusting and uh, trying to just really day by day, hour by hour at this point. I mean, we, yeah. in, an, in an hour, we could be told that we're not allowed to leave our houses and we're shut down. But uh, for the time being, we're still going to be brewing less, less uh, different styles of beer. And we're still going to be packaging uh, as much as um, we're allowed, we're makes sense for us to package. Uh, we've put way more beer in cans because draft cells are all but dried up. But right. we, we also are selling <clears throat> Sixtals to anyone that has a kegerator. <laughs> so, <laughs> and if you don't have one, maybe now's a good time. You know, it's just might a, be it's time a to invest. Yeah, prep preparatory move. Uh, our friend Kelly is asking a little bit uh, about how these beers. Where where can people find these beers other than going to the brewery? Uh, what is your uh, retail footprint? I guess. <clears throat> so we're in uh, we're we're throughout Maine. Um, uh, you know, obviously Greater Portland. Um, uh, 95 corridor um we're uh, we're even up in uh you know carabasset and 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 even further north uh bangor um our central uh, our central <laughs> our distributor is central distributors in maine <laughs> um they have a uh, a more up-to-date uh uh idea of where we are i can tell you where our beer is supposed to go but i can't tell you <laughs> if it's exactly there or not right right at the yeah. second but so we're throughout, we're throughout Maine, we're throughout um, New Hampshire, uh, as well as Massachusetts, um, Boston Metro, uh, out to Springfield. And uh, um, we're not everywhere, but uh, all the time, as no brewery really is, except for the big yeah. guys. But uh, yeah, tri-state tri area. 
Tri-State area, that works. And if you're up for a ride, uh, what are the hours of operation currently at uh, some, which is at 1 York Street in York, and then what's uh, the hours at York Beach Beer Company? So right now we're 12 to 6 for, obviously, like we said, to-go sales. Um, you can call ahead and we'll come out to your car. Uh, you can come in if you're healthy and we have hand sanitizer and we wipe everything down regularly. Uh, and uh, Or if you want to go online, uh, you can, on our, our website, there's a link you can order on the store, pay for it, and then we'll literally walk out, put it, check your ID, put it in your trunk, and you can go on your merry way. Uh, same thing for the beach right now. Um, we're Friday through Sunday at, at, the, at York Beach, York Beach Company, uh, 12 to 6 as well. I can't order online there quite yet because we're still getting those beers in the system and um, hoping to uh, get that. But we do have a few uh, York Beach Beer Company beers at some at the 1 York Street location. Uh, yeah. That um, that you can order uh, here, like here, like, um, but yeah, at some we're going to be we're, gonna, we're seven days a week, twelve to six until they tell us we can't be. So, love it. Uh, just a couple more minutes. So, if you want to get your questions in for Dave Roland of Sun Brewing Company and York Beach Beer Company, go ahead and throw those in the comments. Uh, the la, the la, the la, you 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 stress wise and everything else. No. Uh, I mean. As best as can be. <laughs> Some of us are taking it better than others, um, uh, but you know we're 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 well, we're healthy. Um, I mean, I'm, a few of us are getting over actual influenza, so uh, it, that's a little weird. Knowing that I actually had influenza and I'm getting better, I've never been so happy to have a little bit of a of a wet cough. <laughs> <laughs> right. But right. you know we know we know what it's from. This is you know. Um, so that's a little weird though, when you cough and people look at you and I'm like, no, don't worry. It's like an actual, I'm getting over the flu. Um, but we're all, we're all healthy. Um, and, uh, you know, stress is, uh, is very fluid at this point. There's ups and downs. There's definitely moments where, you know, there's the, our, the, the Brewers Guild and, 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 you know, our, our, our state, uh, even dare I say federal government has been trying to do a lot and there's a lot of like oh man that would be awesome if that went through or things have gone through that have that have helped uh at least ease um some of the stress um uh, mm. there's so much happening though it's really hard to you know even say like hey these are potential options and we're weighing what's best if this one goes through and then you know if one you know a few have gone through and it's like all right great that's cool okay we you know it's 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 fluid it's ever changing and there's moments when it's, you know, I, I, we, we see the people coming and being respectful and thanking us. And it's like, no, thank you. Like, you yeah. know, it's the community support has been unbelievable, which has been really, 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 really like just insanely positive. Um, 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 that's really helps us here at SOM and at York Beach Beer Company to not, you know, think that, you know, everything's just going to go away. Um, but our, our, uh, I mean, that's, that's been honestly the best thing is, is just the amount yeah. of people that have just called in and said, I'm going to order a gift card because you got you, you and I want to support you and hang in there. And it's just like that goes so, so far, above and beyond. And, and the rest of the, you know, the main, the Brewers community, like everyone's talking, the Facebook groups. So people are coming up with good ideas and sharing them. Great. And that's been awesome. Um, but, you know, we're just trying to be smart. My dad is my business partner. You know, I'm, I'm, he's coming in to talk, but he's staying at distance. I mean, he's going to be 65 this year. So it's like, Hey, yeah. <clears throat> why don't you stay home and work from home and I'll, I'll handle all the money and the banking and that crap. And, uh, you know, my mom who is uh, an assistant manager here, it's just like, you don't need to be in the tasting room dealing with yeah. people, even though we're safe about it. It's just like, stay home. You're, it's important to stay safe. And, uh, we're just trying not to go crazy. My wife's actually a little jealous that I get to leave the house to go to work. Um, <laughs> she's, you know, she's a guidance counselor, so she actually, they're still working, and, and she's got yeah. a lot on her plate to deal with, with supporting yep. kids. And, but, it's uh, tougher, perhaps, yeah. Yeah, well, I keep telling her, you can come in and help me wash cakes and stuff. Uh, <laughs> Open invitation, right? Right, always, 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 always. <laughs> Uh, last question. Uh, I know you and your doing your traditions. Are you finding any sort of inspiration in music at these times? Um, I mean, always. Um, yeah. uh, that's um, it's a shame because uh, you know he really 
because I'm more exposed to the public right now, uh, and he and he sort of self quarantining. Um, you know, we can't because he lived he lived he lived in a couple condos down from me. So oh, uh, like he'll, he'll just walk, he'll come over, we'll jam for a little bit and work on some ideas. Um, so we're not really doing that. So I'm trying to like um, tell him how to record stuff like on his phone if he has ideas um, on tech support. So <laughs> I've been uh, trying to get him to do that. But just you know, emailing videos back and forth or check out this band or check this out or i'll send him like something that i've recorded and say learn this bass part or whatever yeah um and um yeah i i play in a band called uh kraken's beard uh with uh good friends at woodland farms brewery just down in kittery and um uh we play in a band together and uh, and, uh, and uh we brewed a beer together called kraken's beard and we today we're going to uh, load up all our gear and play a really loud heavy metal show in my tasting room and drink a bunch of this IPA that we brewed. And that's not happening, so we canned, like, I don't know, we only did a one barrel batch, uh, uh, so we only got about two half two barrels out of it. And because uh, yeah. so, I can't, you know, it's new beer, so we're trying it out. We'll, we plan to brew it on a larger scale, larger scale in the world. world. Uh, but at this point, we're like, well, uh, we can't just drink all of this ourselves. Uh, so we put it into cans and sell them in the tasting room only. Um, but, uh, you know, so that, that was a bit of a, uh, uh, you know, a bit of a letdown that we didn't get a chance <laughs> to do that. But because music is so, you know, important to us in the brewery. Yeah. Uh, but uh, so I encourage you to go check us out and on iTunes or Spotify or Pandora and uh, uh, listen to some good main heavy metal beautiful um, but uh yeah just been playing the guitar a lot and trying to keep stay positive as i can and trying not nice. to drink too much beer and stay healthy <laughs> <laughs> uh this has been fantastic dave uh we are at the end but we've got some uh, comments here uh we're being thanked for doing this very appreciated and informative yeah. from there from there my friend claire mctiernan uh i saw folks uh in from uh real main adventures as well as lone pine brewing um keith wright uh, must be a friend of yours says uh, don't forget P don't for don't forget peter frampton Yes. Uh, He's my uncle. Veron nice. Awesome. <laughs> Veronica says your peanut butter whippy pie stout is fantastic. Thank you. And our friends from Nomad Tours in Quebec say what a great idea to go live. Love from Quebec City. Uh, bonjour, Quebec City. Comment ça va? <laughs> uh, merci beaucoup. Bonjour. And we'll see you all in, uh, in Maine soon. So uh, thank you so much, David, for doing this, being our first. Um, yeah, thank you. Uh, uh, our first tour. Yeah. This has been, it's a, been a lot of fun. A lot of fun and a, a very positive distraction, and I look forward to uh, seeing some of the other ones. So beautiful, but, and just give the websites uh, for everybody who wants to look up or maybe get some gift cards for themselves. Absolutely. So uh, somebrewingco.com. Uh, there's a link uh, that will take you to our online store, so you can purchase stuff for not only some but also York Beach Beer Company, and um, you can order beer on there as well for pickup. Uh, sorry, guys, we don't deliver. Not yet. We're working on it. But uh, working on it a little bit, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. But uh, yeah, great. go on there or just give us a call if you want to swing by and uh, get some beer to go. Great. Uh, Dave, that's great. Thank you so much. Uh, we'll be back at 4 o'clock with our next uh, tour. That's going to be with Michael Schuler of Nonsuch River Brewing Company in Scarborough. If you enjoyed uh, this conversation with David and want to help support Maine Brew Bus, uh, we have set up a, a virtual um, brewery tour tip jar. That's on our uh, webpage at themainbrewbus.com, www.themainbrewbus.com. And the very first thing you'll see at the top of the top is virtual brewery tours. And if you enjoyed the tour, um, we um, never expect but always appreciate a little uh, gratuity as you would on the bus. So, uh, David, from, uh, from us to you, thanks for continuing to make great and wonderful beer. Cheers. And we look forward to seeing you soon. And thanks so much for having us and hang in there. Stay positive. Sounds good. Cheers, everybody. We'll see you at 4 o'clock with our next door. Thanks.